Hello, everybody. This is Joe Dingy on Beautiful Life, and we can integrate ourselves to make our life is more beautiful and beautiful. And but when your body got the pain, you have to see the doctor. But today, we are invited to one of the doctor. He always、uh, help the patient to get the、uh, back and leg. And he is a spine、uh, surgery doctors. He is a doctor who man Melamed. So welcome to our Jojen show with the doctor who man Melamed. And、uh, I think this is your first time to get interviewed by the Asian TV stations. That's correct.、Uh, Thank you. Yeah,、me. when I read your biograph, I found you are、uh, a lead in one of the licenses as spine surgery. Who has gained international reputations and for helping patients with the back and leg conditions regain active and pain-free lives? But what does mean you have been able to treat ninety percentage of the plus of your patient without surgery and with excellent outcomes? Yes. So. Eighty percent of the world population, eighty percent of people in their lifetime, they get back pain. At some point、mm-hmm. in their lifetime, people end up getting some some kind of back pain. Eighty percent of the people. Eighty percent people in the world doesn't matter. Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, North America doesn't matter. Everybody, I had back pain. Everybody gets it. The good news is that ninety percent of people don't need surgery. You can help people get better without surgery. Initially, pain could be very bad, but good news. Most patients can get better without surgery by doing, for example, chiropractic treatments, acupuncture, massage, physical therapy. Very critical. Now we have Pilates, you know,、uh, plyometric exercises. If those don't work, then we can do maybe epidural steroid injections, or something we have even better now is doing stem cells, where we can take patients' own stem cells or. We now have amniotic baby stem cells from the baby that you can inject to allow the people to get better and avoid surgery. So that's how you can avoid surgery on ninety percent of the patients. Yeah, I agree because you know、uh, I have an experience. Maybe more than ten years ago. Yes. I have a very painful in my back when I driving, when I sleep, when I get up. Oh, I got a lot of painful. So I decided to slap the floor. For six months, after six months, my pain is gone. So it is the same like you see a little bit like you see、uh, about that. A ninety percentage of the patients plus, they can get some suggestion. They can fix by themselves. Yes, absolutely. So、uh, your situation is very common. A lot of people have, like you, get back pain. They can sit at work. They can drive. They can exercise. They get this. But、uh, you know, you kind of did. Had somebody do a deep massage by walking on you, which I would not re- recommend. You know, it's better to have a professional deal with、yeah. that,、uh, mm-hmm. so you don't get hurt, basically. But you know, for example, sleeping at night time. You know, everybody sleeps about six to eight hours a night, so it's very important to sleep in the right position. For example, a lot of people sleep the wrong way. Sleeping, for example, on your stomach, it's not sometimes ideal situation. Best best position is usually laying on your back, flat. Would put pillows on your knees, your heels. You know, put pillows around your shoulders to cushion your body, so your back is well rested. Other things to do: you sit at work. A lot of people sit at work on the computer. They start doing this.、Mm-hmm. That's not good. You have to sit, basically supporting your、uh, your core、mm-hmm. muscles and having a very like tight in your posture, so you're not becoming like loading up your spine sitting in this position, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, things like a lot of people are looking down on their phone all the time, you know, mm-hmm. texting. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, yeah. yeah, that's not good. You know,、uh, bring the phone here. You know, play around with it here. You know, things like that,、mm-hmm. like little things during the day. You watch out your、uh, posture, basically when you sleep at work, can go a long way helping you. And engage in a consistent exercise program, low impact aerobics, and you know, Pilates core exercises like three times a week. You should be fine for the rest of your life. Okay,、uh, thank you for telling me. So I want to ask you.、Uh, most of when when I was a kid,、uh, our parents always tell me don't sleep in the soft of the bed, and、uh, 
As being the uh, very experienced, uh, the expert of the spine surgery doctors, what are you suggesting to the uh, many people, even our audience? And uh, most time we sleep the soft bed or hot bed. You know, as I said, it, it all depends on, um, like for example, my parents, mm -hmm. their bed is very firm. I cannot firm. sleep on that bed. Uh -huh. It's very uncomfortable. Uh -huh. You know, then I, my uncle, he has a water bed. He sleeps on a water bed, oh. which is very comfortable for him. It's hard to tell soft or hard because it depends on your body shape. How tall are you? How big your shoulders are, your buttock, your, it, it all depends on that. The key is, you know if you're sleeping the right way. If you wake up, you feel very fresh. If you mm -hmm. wake up and you're, you're hurting, ah, my back hurts, my shoulder hurts, my, my neck hurts. That's, so we that's have to change of it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So everything depends on how you feel. That's exactly how right. How you feel comfortable or you're not uncomfortable. That's exactly right. Okay, so Dr. The Home, yeah, you, you want people call you Dr. Home or you want people call you a man name? Dr. Human is fine. Sure. Fine, okay. So I know when, when you, before I met you, uh, we were very seen each other, but I heard of you, a very celebrated doctor, and I did the homework. I saw a lot of the videos from the YouTube and the Google. You get a lot of interview by like the doctors, like the Fox and the Friends, yes. like Dr. Ozzy, yes. like the uh, Steve the Harvey Shoe. Steve Harvey, yeah, yes, I yes. saw you have the very interesting the fan funny the uh, program and uh, uh, you even you get the interview a lot of the times by doctors yes that inter host is a doctor travels correct even I saw one video you get the surgery for doctor travels that's correct I want to know that story what happened there so I got to know dr. Travis going on the show being invited on the show and then he started talking to me mm -hmm. and He's like, you know, I've got this neck problem, you know, it's like, so he came to me, we got an MRI, he had a little uh, area pinch nerve in his neck, mm -hmm. a pinch nerve on his right side, and he basically was scared of surgery. Mm -hmm. Let's try non-surgery. He tried it for about a year and a half, didn't get better. Mm -hmm. Pinch, you know, he just constantly doing this, couldn't sleep at nighttime. He could wow. not sleep at nighttime, mm -hmm. wake him up the pain, his arm would go numb, on him and he would start getting some, a little weakness. Finally, he was like, let's do surgery. So he came to me, he asked what surgery I would do. I said, Dr. Travis, very small, 30 minute surgery, go in the back, in the back of the neck, make a little opening. He told me that he saw other spine surgeons who wanted to do something more. They wanted to do a fusion or artificial disc, big surgery, mm -hmm. much bigger surgery. I told him microscopic, minimally invasive. So we went, basically 30 minutes in the back, make a little opening and uh, open up the hole, relieve the pinched nerve. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 minute surgery, he went home in like two, three hours later, recovered very fast, back to work within 10 days. Now he waited a long time for like two years before he had surgery with a pinched nerve. So his recovery took a little bit, like the pinched nerve took a while to recover, but you know, he's going to be back to doing everything, he's doing everything now, no restrictions at all. I actually wrote a book chapter on how to do the procedure uh, because not that many people know how to do it. So it's teach other people how to do the procedure. I would like everyone to welcome Dr. Melamed to the show and you know, I visited you, that was back at the beginning of season eight, but your words, which were so profound to me were, Travis, if you don't address this, your nerve could be shot for life. So I wanna thank you for, for encouraging me to come see you. Thank you, thank you, thanks. But you, cool. you sobered me up when you showed me the MRI and you showed that there was definitely a reason for my, my numbness and my pain. You had the classic symptoms, which is numbness, pain, stiffness, radiating pain, and the weakness. When you have nerve pressure, you could get any of these symptoms, but you had all of them. And the key was not ignoring them because you don't want permanent nerve damage. The lesson I learned here is you, you never ignore numbness. Absolutely. Numbness and weakness, not a whole lot's going on right when that occurs. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. I mean, you don't want to ignore that because if you ignore that, at some point, that is going to become irreversible. You'll never get it back. So don't ignore your body. Listen to your body. 
get the appropriate treatment and hit it hard. And the good news is 90% of the people get better without surgery ultimately. Wow, so right now he's gonna go like, he's gonna like perfect. Yes. I saw your video, a lot of pension. There is a celebrity people, there is an athlete, there's a young girl, yes. or old woman, old people. You still help them. Yeah, yes. you still do surgery, help them. Like the very, before they, see, they saw you, they are found very bad. Even some people cannot walk. That's correct. After the surgery, they can walk, they can right away to uh, mira miraculous to me at that time. So you're like a magic. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so I just want to, so when you do surgery, do you do a many surgery to your pendulum? What do you think about that? First, you try, how can you get the patient better without surgery, okay? Very mm -hmm. important. You always try to think, what can I do to get the patient better without surgery. Let's say that's not an option. You have to do surgery. I take every surgery very, very seriously. You have to think about the surgery. It's not like you get in the car and drive. I think about every surgery. The bigger the surgery, the more I think about it before the surgery, the night before, the week before. I start thinking, you plan the surgery in your head. It's like a video. I start planning in the head exactly what I'm doing keep playing the video in my head over and over again for the bigger surgery. Mm -hmm. So then you plan it perfectly. Very important, I focus on one surgery at a time, meaning there are some doctors who are running two or three rooms at the same time, doing three surgery at the same time. No good, cannot do that. It's not fair to the patient. So I focus one surgery at a time and I don't do a lot of surgeries in one day because I wanna be fresh. You focus mm -hmm. concentration on the patient. Have to do perfect job uh, on the patient. And every surgery, I think about how I could have done the surgery better afterwards. So I always think, what can I do to make it better? What can I do to make it more improved? So you approach the surgery as though I'm operating on my own brother, my own mother, my own father, and you approach the surgery in that way. And I feel most of the surgeries, you end up hitting a home run. You do. Patients do great. Yeah, I saw that video. He's feel very perfect right yes. now. Yeah. Uh, somehow you are right now, you are a celebrity doctor. That people call you super doctor. They call you top doctors. Before you are famous, after you are famous, how do you think your life? How different your life is? before you're famous and after famous? My personal life honestly has not changed. I'm still who I am. You know, I've not, it, you know, it's one of those things that doesn't go into my head. You know, I'm still the same guy I was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I'm still the same guy. It has, my practice has gotten very busy. A lot of phone calls from patients from all over the country, out of the country. So I'm getting a lot of patients calling in. So that has gotten very busy. But my personal life, uh, no, I'm still the same. I'm still the same guy. People know me the same way as I was before. Yes. And uh, I just want to know, what do you think of the beautiful life? Like, I know you are very busy. You, you lead, a lot of people lead you, you know, lead your surgery. How many hours you work, may I ask? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, as I've gotten busier, some days I'm working uh, as much as uh, 12, 14 hours really? a day. 12 to 14 hours a day. Sometimes I work 80 hours a week. It, you know, people need depends. Depends, depends you know, only, yeah. Depends uh, lead you, yeah. Exactly, you know, I'm always, as I said, I'm always thinking how I can improve on things. For example, the big, big surgeries, I figured out a way how to do the surgery, shorter amount of time, less blood loss, faster mm -hmm. recovery, and out of the hospital in, in three to four days instead of a week, basically. Mm -hmm. So I'm always coming up with techniques on how to improve, you know, patient outcome after surgery. So this is very, gratifying for me when patients come and they hug you and they write a letter to you thank you they write a review this is what I love about doing if I win the lottery tomorrow I'm not gonna stop working I would just treat you know I would just work and treat as many people for free as I can uh -huh. that means you enjoy your life I love you enjoy I your job you love your job I that's love it. very good like I love my talk to you yes <laughs> I love it before we start our talk show you show me the video or show me the picture you just help the one patient oh I saw that span yes just like they all 
That's like the, oh my goodness, but you make the surgery, make them recover everything. So you told me you will take the eight hours to do the surgery. That's correct. So making me surprised how the person can do the one job, continue to eight hours. Wow. So you lead that very good yourself, the leader very preparing everything. So could you tell me a little bit to describe it of the how you can do the eight hours for one pension do that? Number one, you mm -hmm. have to have, you have to love what you do. You have to love what you do and you have to have passion for it. You have to have that. Because if you have love and passion, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. You can concentrate. So the night before I always get a good night's sleep and I'm always exercising. I always exercise to keep in very good shape as much as I am. Since I'm still mm -hmm. relatively young, try to be in good shape as I can. Eat well, exercise, sleep well, love my job, and have passion. And eight hours goes like that. You don't even think. I'm not even looking at the clock. You just get the job. You're like, oh, okay, eight hours. So, and it's like, it's so gratifying. I can actually, I cannot sleep that night because I'm so pumped up. I'm so excited about how great the surgery went. Mm, so you, our interview today make me think of my talk show topic. Don't you shiny put a fly? If we want to make our life is beautiful, we have to make ourselves the beautiful. That's right. If you want to help the people, your life is beautiful. You first you have to make yourself. That's right. Beautiful. That's right. I got it. A point from you. I, when you were a kid, you want to be the doctor, or you would just want to do the other things. How? When did you begin to have an idea? when you want to be a doc doctor? I wanted to be a doctor before I even started school because oh, my father school? my father was a doctor oh. um, in my country. I'm from Iran. He was a oh. doctor in Iran and he was in charge of the emergency room. So I would go with him. When I was six or seven years old, I would see you know, patients with him and I loved it. I loved so science. Is wrong. In Iran, you were, yes. You were to see the doctor. Okay. In Iran, I loved it. So I, I was like, I want to be a doctor. I was very good in science. I didn't think about anything other than being a doctor from the time I was six years old. So I wanted to be a doctor. Then we moved to the United States when I was uh, 12 years old. 12, 13 Only 12 years old. Years old you came to the United States. Came to the United okay. States. And I knew I wanted to be a doctor. I went to high school and I fell in love with neurosurgery, uh, with brain, I fell in love with the brain, basically. I loved, I said, I want to be a neurosurgeon, basically. I love the brain. So mm -hmm. in college, I actually went to UCLA in college and I majored in neuroscience, mm -hmm. thinking I'm going to be a neurosurgeon. But UCLA did not have neuroscience major. I talked to the neuroscience department for graduate school. I petitioned, I created the major. Then my second year, I took physics, biomechanics, as part of the requirement for medical school, and I fell in love with biomechanics. My uncle, my, my, which is my mom's brother at the time, was doing his orthopedic spine surgery fellowship. And he told me there's a lot of connection between physics and orthopedic surgery and spine. I'm like, really? He said, yeah, this is what you should do. So. The next summer, between my second and third year college, I went and spent like two, three, two months in surgery almost every week watching spine surgery and orthopedic. Oh. And I fell in love with that. I'm like, you know okay. what? I want to be orthopedic spine surgeon. After that, I went to medical school uh, and I started right away with the orthopedic spine department and I started researching and shadowing and observing cases. So. And here we are now, so I, since college, I wanted to be an orthopedic spine surgeon. So I loved the biomechanics, the concept, you know, I fell in love with it. I want to ask, so what do you think of the East, like the Chinese traditional medicine? What, what do you, how do you feel about that? I, I believe in that a lot. I believe in uh, proper diet, basically. I believe that the food you eat has a lot to do with what happens to you and how you recover after surgery. So I'm incorporating now nutrition um, and you know with the probiotics now nutrition very very important for patient recovery afterwards every patient now they get my list of uh, basically what I call anti-inflammatory diets to incorporate to help them recover whether they have surgery or not mm -hmm. doesn't matter but especially if they have surgery it helps people to recover a lot faster also 
not to take narcotics anymore. Western, a lot of pain medications, a lot of narcotics, not good. You want to depend on holistic stuff, like, you know, the uh, non-narcotic opiate medications, like, for example, uh, ginger, turmeric, you know. So some of those Eastern stuff, it has been very, very powerful to avoid patients having pain after surgery and not become dependent on these narcotics. So, you, you know, in the United States right now, the very popular is the acupuncture. Oh, I love it. I, I, I love people. It. No, absolutely. Acupuncture so is So you great. believe that acupuncture? You oh, think that huge. acupuncture can treat people? Absolutely. I had, uh, when I had my knee surgery many years ago, I had acupuncture done after surgery to help with the pain. Oh. Very helpful. Uh, very helpful. Very helpful. That's interesting because you are a spine surgery doctor. <laughs> so you no. accept the acupuncture. I yeah. believe in uh, the acupuncture, like hyperbaric oxygen therapy, when you go lay in oxygen chamber, all that stuff, yeah, great acupuncturists, they can basically give, you know, the Eastern uh, part of the medicine. And I do believe in that. It works. So your concept is if the patient has lead surgery, the lead surgery, if they don't lead it, you suggesting them to use a many integrated way yes. to help the patient. That's your concept. And after the surgery, I always tell people, I'm only good 50%. The other 50% is the patient to do okay. other modalities, soft tissue, acupuncture, physical therapy to get better, basically. Uh, you see, after the surgery, they, they, a patient, they have to help themselves by, them, by themselves to recover everything. For any surgery, yes. Okay, but when you did the surgery for them, after the a few hours, they can get up, they can walk, and uh, so most of the time, the average, how many days they can really recover everything. Most of the surgeries, the patients are after you know after a couple of hours, they're walking and they, they they walk and they go home. They're driving in a few days, and people go to work in a few days. So it's very rapid. Days, so people yes. can go to work. They can pretty much travel, get back to their normal life. And before I let you go, I want to ask you a question. I know right now you're a achiever. A lot of people invite you to go to make the speech. And uh, But I heard that you set up their charity agency to call back to you. Yes. So when did you start that? Why, you do, why do you do that? Yes, there are unfortunately some patients, they don't have the financial needs, they don't have the insurance, and they need help. So I have a program called Back to You. It was set up about a little bit over five years ago that basically uh, my own, some of my own patients, they, if I ask them for the money, they will send the money to help do the surgery for somebody who has no they have no money, they have no uh, insurance, they can't do anything, and they still wanna get treated. So I like to help people once a month do, I mean, I won't charge for myself, it's just mm -hmm. to help for the facility for the surgery. I'll do the surgery free on my own time, but just mm -hmm. to help the facility fee, the cost of that base for the patient. So before you go, I want your comments, what's your concept of your beautiful life? You know, a beautiful life is uh, a life where you mitigate stress around you. Try not to have stress. Be spend a lot of time, you know, I think with the family. Try to be kind to people. Try to be nice to people because it will, it will come back to you. Treat everybody with dignity and respect because it, guess what? It will come back to you. Treat animals. I believe in animals too. Treat animals with respect too, the way you treat the humans because they deserve as much as much as we do. And treat your employees, if you're employer, treat your employees with respect. They're just like you, basically. And then love, have passion. Have passion about what you do. Forget about the money. Mm -hmm. The money doesn't matter. The money will come. If you have passion, you respect, you love what you do, you take care of people, God will take care of you. Okay. And spend time for yourself. Have I exercise. like your concept of a beautiful life. We have the passion, we have the love, we have today uh respect zing everything make the, our world more beautiful thank yes, you for yes. coming thank, thank you very much thank, thank you, you for our me. joe jinchu and beautiful life thank so you. thank you for watching the joe jinchu beautiful life and the uh,